Hey everyone, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. Unfortunately, today's case is beyond sad and very tragic. I'm sure most of you are familiar with this case. We're going to be talking about the disappearance of Garrett Bardsley. Now, most of you, a lot of you have recommended I cover this case. I don't normally cover children's cases just because it's just too painful and I can't deal with it, but... This family has gone through just absolute hell. So we're going to be going to the Uinta Mountains in Utah. I'm going to have maps up as always. So let's just take a minute to look at the terrain. The Uinta Wasatch Cache National Forest. So back in 2004 in August, a Boy Scout group uh, 694 was hiking and camping in this area here are some pictures these are all pictures of the area so you can get an idea now unfortunately because this case has been covered so much there's a lot of misinformation and it took me a while to actually filter through all of it in august of 2004 the scout team led a troop to the cubant lake which is pictured here we're going to be talking about garrett galdry pictured here very nice young man, only 12 years old, had his whole life in front of him. They were camping at this lake. They were fishing. So they got up early and they decided to fish in Kubert Lake number one. Now, this is very confusing because I've studied this case. I've looked all over the resources. The differences between the lakes is confusing, but from what I can determine, Kubert Lake is number one and i'll have some maps up to show you they were fishing there however they were camping at cuberant lake number four and again i'll have some maps up to show you at about 8 a.m they got up to go fishing they father and son they were just doing a fishing trip they wanted to catch uh, breakfast however unfortunately for Garrett, his shoes became wet, and after a little bit of time, he said that he wanted to go back to camp to change his shoes. His father, because the camp was only about roughly 175 yards. Now, if you read the research, it will say about 150 feet, but really, when you go to this area, that's not possible. Unfortunately, after his son left his side, he went back to the campsite. Now, his father did yell out directions, giving him directions to the campsite. When Garrett disappeared behind the trees, that was the last time he was sadly ever seen again. His father, after about 20 minutes, realized that something must be wrong. So he went back up to the campsite. Garrett was nowhere to be found. They immediately started a search. Now, remember, these are all Boy Scouts and Garrett had completed wilderness survival training. They figured due to the terrain and the time this happened because he went missing around 8 a.m. in the morning. So they figured, okay, well, we'll just go out, we'll find him. He's a known Boy Scout, he knows what to do. Unfortunately, after their initial search, they did not find him. So they actually enlisted some of the Boy Scouts, which is kind of a lot to put on a 12-year-old, but they told them that their friend would be dead in less than 12 hours unless they found him. This search started a huge, massive search. Over 200 volunteers got involved. There was originally 18, roughly 18 Boy Scouts and around 7 parents, adults, in this area during this camping expedition. I'm going to show you some pictures of the trail in and around the lake. So here is a picture of the trail that goes around the lake. It's actually quite difficult to get to this lake basin. You have to take a trail that's actually very well marked. The trails in between the lakes are not as well marked. Now this next picture is something that I found on the internet, but it has the lakes marked the wrong numbers. Now, I don't know if this was a mistake or if it's just something I don't know. It's very confusing. This is a picture of the rock basin. The reason I'm showing you this picture is because during one of the second days of the search, they found one of his socks or they thought they found one of his socks. 
This was a Nike ankle sock. The reason I say they thought they might have found it because one of the search and rescue officers reported that he took one of his socks off in that same area and he was wearing the same brand of sock. However, the mother is adamant that it was her son's sock, which is understandable. It's just confusing because Garrett was also carrying a fishing pole. He was wearing a black quicksilver hoodie with also red, black, reversible leggings or whatever you want to call them. The fact is that none of these other items were found. The fishing pole, his one sock was found. It's just confusing because it kind of leads tend to see the fact that it might be the search and rescue officer's sock. Unfortunately, even with these clues, they had to scale down the search. Eventually, it got down to around 50 people. The weird thing is that this area is sort of in a horseshoe shape, sort of an amphitheater. So anybody who would yell out, the voice would carry. And this was a young man who was trained in the outdoors. He knew what he was doing. It's uncertain what happened, but looking at all the clues, I'm not so certain that that was his sock. I think it might have been the search and rescuers. It's just bizarre that none of his other things were found. His fishing pole, any of his other clothing. Yes, we know he went up to the camp to because he wanted to change his clothing. However, he never made it there. That never happened. Still to this day, no remains, no body, nothing has been found. I just find it hard to believe that this young man went missing with his fishing pole in this area where his father said that he knew the trail he had been on it before it just i know that the police rolled out kidnapping but i just feel like there was someone else involved i just can't help but shake that notion his father and mom are both amazing people i mean i can't even imagine but they started a foundation and they have kept the search up. As soon as I get well, I this is going to be one of my first search and rescue efforts. I'm going to put together a special team, hopefully go out there and look around and figure out hopefully what we can do to help this family. It just makes absolutely no sense. When you look at the terrain, the boulder field where his sock was found or quote unquote his sock was found, I'm going to have a few more pictures here and maps just so you can get an idea of the location. Again, I just find it impossible that all the searches, everything, everybody that's been out there since they haven't found his fishing pole or anything else. That's why I find it suspicious that his sock or what thought was to be his sock, especially because the search and rescue officer said that he had taken off one of his socks and left it there. So it's just impossible to know. Uh, this case has so many twists and turns and it's just so sad and so tragic. The family has just been amazing. They have had a school built in his name and I'm just hoping and praying that we can find answers and bring them closure. I want to dedicate this video to Garrett, his friends, his family of course, everyone who knew and loved him, all the search and rescue officers and volunteers and everyone that's gone out there since and everyone else that's covered this case. Uh, I just give you my thoughts and prayers and blessing and I just hope in one way or another we can bring this family some closure. I want to thank you all for watching as always. I appreciate all your support. I'm sure the families do. Everyone does. You guys are all so awesome. Special thank you to co.ag for letting me use their background music. They're awesome. If you ever want to check out their channels in the description. Hopefully I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Hey everyone. Thanks for sticking with me until the end. I appreciate everybody watching. All my new subscribers. Everyone that's been with me from the beginning, I just appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, I'd be grateful if you did subscribe. It's free. Uh, anyway, I just 
this case really touched my heart and I'm hoping to get well enough and put together a team and go out to Utah sometime maybe next spring and do a search and rescue effort in this area hopefully to bring this family some closure and I appreciate all of you that brought this case to my attention I appreciate all of you and I hope all of you are doing well I thank you for all your support if you want to leave any donations my info is in the description but if not a comment anything is okay and I appreciate that thank you so much see you next time